Today we're going to be going over how to build a rifle profile in the GeoBallistics by Vortex app. So in GeoBallistics, I'm on the home screen. I'm calling the home screen the heads up display. If I look in the bottom left hand corner, I see a reticle icon. I'll go ahead and click on that. That brings me to the next page. I have a My Rifles folder. I hit the drop down. I have one free default gun profile. If you need additional rifle profiles, you can upgrade to the pro version for a small one time fee. So on that default profile, I'll go ahead and click on those three dots just to the right of it. And then I'll click edit. That brings me to the next page. The first thing I'm going to do is name my gun profile. So I'll click up here. And the way I like to name my rifles is I like to indicate which rifle of it is mine. And then which ammunition I shoot out of it. I'll indicate here I shoot 175 grain Sierra Match Kings. So I know that this is my Defiance rifle. I'm, it's a 308 and I shoot 175 grain Sierra Match Kings out of it. So I got that labeled. I'll go down. I have rifle information that it's asking me to input. The first thing I need to do is select my rifle cartridge. So I'll hit the drop down and I'll scroll down until I see that 308 Winchester. I'll click on that. Then it's asking for my zero range. I'm zeroed at 100 yards, so I have that input. So for my elevation and windage offset, that's if my rifle wasn't hitting point of aim, point of impact, there was actually a zero discrepancy. I could indicate that here. Uh, if you need information on how to do that, next to the name rifle is an information icon. If I click on that, it'll give me all the information about all these variables that I have to put into. It's very clearly laid out and it tells you how you need to do that. So I'm hitting point of aim, point of impact. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave a zero there under both of those. Next, we have barrel twists. The barrel twist for my rifle is one in 10. The barrel twist is sometimes found stamped on your actual barrel itself. Or if you don't know that, or it's not stamped on your barrel, you can refer to your manufacturer's website, find your rifle, and it should be pretty easily found that way. My rifle is a one in 10. I have that punched in right here. Keep in mind as well, most rifle barrels are right hand twist barrels. So mine is a right hand twist barrel. I just put 10 in there. If this was a left hand twist barrel and it was a one in 10 twist, I would put negative 10. Moving on, we have muzzle velocity, a key variable that we're putting into this program. So my muzzle velocity is 2,615 feet per second. Ideally, if we could, we'd like to measure this with a chronograph. Worst case scenario, we can just pull it off the box of ammunition to get us pretty close. If we're taking the velocity off the box of ammunition and we're not really seeing what we need to downrange, we have the muzzle velocity truing feature. We can use that to fine tune the information in the app. We have another video that'll walk you through using that feature. Moving on, underneath that we have muzzle velocity temp. So if I click that on, I can actually true up my velocity based off the temperature I'm shooting in. If I'm seeing big swings in my muzzle velocity, in certain temperatures, certain environments. I can use this feature to true things up. Keep in mind, this is an optional feature. It's not necessarily required. So moving down in the app, building out my gun profile, it's asking for information on my bullet. So this is the actual projectile itself, the information there. So in this case, I'm shooting Federal ammunition and it has the 175 grain Sierra Match King bullet. So I'm not necessarily looking for a Federal bullet here. I'm looking for that Sierra Match King projectile and filling out the information based off of that. And I'll go ahead and use the bullet library. You can see the rifle I'm shooting is 308. Manufacturer of my projectile is Sierra. So I'll scroll down till I find Sierra. And then my bullet weight is 175. And you can see I have some options down below. I'm gonna go ahead and select one of those. And you can see that it auto populated all that information. I didn't have to run around to find it. Everything is good to go from there. Another option we have is to save those projectiles to the app. This is found in the pro version. So when we download GeoBallistics for free, this is what you're going to see. But if you want that option to save your projectile, you're going to need the pro version for that one. So if I'm not using the bullet library, I'm going to go ahead and manually enter those variables. I'll just click on that section here real quick. You can go through, you can see it's asking for the name of the bullet, Q, 
caliber, that's caliber in inches. Weight, weight of the bullet is pretty easily found. It's usually on our box of ammunition. And then the length is actually the length of the projectile itself. So it's important to note that. That can sometimes be a little bit harder piece of information to find, but we're talking about the actual projectile that we're shooting. So now it's asking for the drag model. We have G1 and G7. The G1 drag model is for flat base bullets. So if that's the projectile you're shooting, that's the one you're gonna to wanna to use. If you're shooting more of a boat tail bullet, we're gonna want that G7 drag model. And then it's also asking for which metro was used for the ballistic coefficient. So how they actually measured the atmosphere to come up with a ballistic coefficient. There's a army way to do it and an international civil aviation organization way to do it. ICAO is the most common one. So if you're not sure, it's probably the ICAO. And then finally, it's asking for the ballistic coefficient of our bullet at the bottom. So we can type that in if we're doing things manually. In V min, that's velocity minimum. In V max, velocity maximum. So it has to be between zero and 5,000, but we can start to bracket out our velocity if we need to, but it's not totally necessary to do that. So we can leave that between zero and 5,000 and simply type in the BC of our bullet. So I'll go ahead and back out from here. And you can see that information from initially auto populating is still there. And we'll scroll down even further. And now it's asking for information on my optic. So I'll hit the drop down, and you can see I have those same options here. So if I hit the looking glass icon here, I can select from library, and you can pick your vortex optic from the library. So I can go to the family of optics. I'm shooting a razor, and the units of measure that I use are MRAD or milliradian, and my magnification is six to 36. I have the six to 36 razor on my rifle, and you can see it's giving me the option right there. I'll tap on that and it will auto populate all the information for my optics so I don't have to, again, go looking for that information offhand. So I use that scope library to find my actual optic. And you can see if I scroll down towards the bottom where it has my reticle name, I'll hit that drop down arrow. And that shows me an image of my reticle so I can ensure, yes, that is the reticle that I'm using. It looks like the one I'm using and I can also see some information about it. So if I scroll back up, I can look up that scope in the library, or again, I can manually enter the information if I need to. So that's just that icon just to the right. I'll click on that. I have the option to name my optic, select the solution units if I'm shooting in milliradian, MOA, or I have the option to see my solution units in inches. Uh, my focal plane, whether it's first focal plane or second focal plane, very easy to tell if you have a first focal plane scope, simply look through the scope, pan through the magnification, and if your reticle shrinks and grows, that's first focal plane. And if you do that same thing and your reticle stays the same size, that's second focal plane. And then I also type in my minimum and maximum magnification. And then when we come to elevation and windage SSF, that's if I have a tracking error in my optic itself. So if I dialed on 10 mils, but the optic mechanically actually dialed on 10.2 or maybe 9.8, that would be a scope tracking error. If I knew about that, I could go ahead and dictate that to this application and the solution will be corrected for me based off the tracking error that I said. And then the final pieces of information, it's asking for our scope tube diameter. So the actual diameter of the scope tube on our optic, mine is a 34 millimeter. And then the diameter units, are you talking in inches or are you talking in millimeters here? So the reason that we're inputting these variables so that when we're using the reticle view feature, when we're panning in and out with the magnification range, we actually see what our image should look like through our reticle. If we don't have a vortex optic, a generic reticle will be generated for you. So if we did opt to go with the pro version of GeoBallistics, we had the option to go ahead and save this optic to our profile. That way we can recall all this information very easily later on when we're taking the scope and putting it on a different gun. Or if we just have several of these optics and we're building new rifles, we have that information right there. So I finished putting the majority of the information for my optic into the app. I'm gonna go ahead and back out, hit that top left arrow. And the final piece of information that the app needs is my sight height. So you can see Next to site height, I have a little camera where I have the option to type in that information. If I hit the camera icon, 
I can allow GeoBallistics to access my camera and my phone. I can dictate the actual scope tube of my optic. Mine is a 34 millimeter, so that's input right there. And then there's an explanation of how to use the camera to measure your sight height. So if I hit continue, I can go ahead and line up this camera with the optic. And with the picture, I can measure my sight height and that information will be put into the app. So if you didn't use the camera feature and you opted to manually put the information in, I'd simply click in the right hand box there and measure my sight height. The sight height is measured from the center of your bore to the center of your optic. The application needs to know that offset. So in my case, it's two inches. And now I have all the information for my optic in there and I'm good to go. Further down, I have that geoballistics overlays. So with this section, it's handy for you hunters out there. I get information on my vital size, the actual size of my target, how far out I can hold center and hit that target, energy threshold and velocity threshold. Further down, that's where I'm gonna do my muzzle velocity and ballistic coefficient truing if I need those features. And then lastly, we have a section for notes, which can be very handy. If I go ahead and hit that plus symbol on the right of notes, I can go ahead and dictate information if I'm on the range shooting. I can record information specific to my gun, what I'm seeing down range, things I just wanna recall later in the actual gun profile itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and back out of the notes section here. I'll hit that top left arrow. And if I scroll up, one last note on building a gun profile. If you look next to optic, rifle, bullet, you have a little information icon. Again, if you hit that icon, It'll explain all the information that the app is looking for. So if you forget all the stuff in this video, you have an option to go ahead and seek out this information. The app will literally walk you through it step by step. So I'll go ahead and X out of that. I'm going to hit that top left arrow and back out. And I'm going to do that one more time. And that will bring me to the heads up display again. Now this is reflecting all of the information that I built for my gun. So if I pan over to the chart section, you can see the name of my rifle is built right there, Defiance 308 175 SMK, and it's giving me information that I can use to shoot targets at distance. That's how you build a gun profile in Geoballistics. Download the app today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out by phone or email. We're always here to help.